wanna talk? So let's talk. Yeah. Talk. If you wanna talk, you gotta talk, you need to talk. News talk. I talk, you talk to Solomon. I talk, you talk to Solomon. Yeah, let's talk to Solomon. Talk, talk, talk to Solomon. Good evening, good evening, and welcome. It's Talk to Solomon on voting day here in Indiana, where the results are not what I would like, but at least some of them are. We welcome to our program my friend, Dr. Alan Keyes. Alan, how are you? I'm doing fine, Stan. How are you? I am fine, although I would be finer if Steve Davis had prevailed, but he did not. But oh, Luger is out, and that's a positive. And I think across this country, we're going to see this... Uh, movement by many people to say we're going to make sure that at least the legislative branch is as conservative as we can get it. What your thought? Well, Stan, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't buy it. Uh, it's not that I don't buy the fact that uh, Lugar, who I think should have been cashiered a long time ago, uh, uh, wasn't a left-wing Republican. But the forces that now control the party are, are left-wing. Uh, an outright socialist. So you're going to nominate somebody like Romney, who's basically an out-and-out -out socialist with a record to match it, and then pretend that somewhere along the line it's possible to take a party controlled by those forces. And because you elect here and there somebody who's not, you're going to turn it around? Uh, I don't think that's possible. I, I think the twin party sham is now entrenched with a single purpose, and that is to overthrow the sovereignty of the American people and to put power in the hands of a leftist, godless elite. And they're going to do it. Uh, and, and the parties are now, both of them, oriented in that direction. Every step they have taken over the last several years has moved us in that direction, without exception that I can think of. Uh, and that's an endemic problem. It's a structural problem. It's a problem that has to be addressed at the deep root that it comes from. Lopping off rotten fruit here and there isn't going to solve the problem because the tree is now rooted in a, a place that is poisoned. And, and I think that's the problem with the Republican Party. Uh, and I think that what's needed is for the people of this country uh, to take back the initiative not just in choosing amongst the phony candidates they get in these phony primaries, uh, but to take back the initiative, as I think our founders intended, from the grassroots uh, when you're dealing with the most important offices. And by that I mean you have to find a way to get around this whole hijacked party system, with its, which is nothing but a sham. So any of its individual results now don't matter a bit to me. I, I, I don't think they're going to affect anything. We have been fooling ourselves that way for at least... 10 or 15 years, probably since Reagan left office. And nothing has gotten better. It has gotten worse and worse. And to keep following the same delusions makes no sense to me. Uh, and we're already at a point where if people don't wake up and do what's needed to stop this basically Soviet-style twin party sham from rigging the choices that people are presented with so that you don't get any that aren't across the line pretty far to the left. Uh, then I think we're, we're over the cliff and gone. Your point is well made, and no one can really intelligently argue it. Uh, I want to enforce it by this video. We're going to watch a video uh, talking about how our government knowingly, Obama, but the, the po politicians from both sides of the aisle have done nothing about an obvious theft uh, because they're all so hungry for votes. Uh, that Well, let's just watch this, then we'll comment on it. Here we go. Tonight, an eyewitness news investigation is sparking outrage from Indiana all the way to Washington, D.C. Thirteen investigates expose how the IRS is sending huge tax refunds to millions of illegal immigrants. It's a loophole that costs billions. Investigative reporter Bob Siegel shows you why the IRS is allowing it to happen and why some members of Congress want to stop it. Congressman Dan Burton is angry. Why in the world? are we doing this? He's responding to what 13 investigates discovered all across Indiana. Mucho dinero. Yeah. See? Illegal immigrants like these getting big tax refunds because of a loophole in federal law. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar fraud scheme here that is taking place. This local tax preparer brought the loophole to our attention. 
He has thousands of tax returns that show how undocumented workers collect what's called additional child tax credits for children who've never even lived in this country. I can bring out stacks and stacks. It's just so easy. It's ridiculous. How easy? This illegal immigrant admitted his address is used to file tax returns by four other undocumented workers who don't even live here. Those four workers claim 20 children live inside this one trailer home in southern Indiana. And as a result, the IRS sent the illegal immigrants tax refunds totaling more than $29,000. But at this address, we saw only one child, not 20. Hay 20 niños viviendo aquí. No, no viven aquí. Los otros niños pues en su país de origen, que es México. He told me the 20 kids in Mexico have never lived in the United States. But the IRS gave them tax credits anyway, even though the agency's own rules say child tax credits can only be claimed for kids who are U.S. citizens. There's not a doubt in my mind. There's huge fraud taking place here. It's a growing problem. It's nationwide. And it's out of control. Eyewitness News obtained Treasury Department audit reports that show illegal immigrants now get additional child tax credits, totaling $4.2 billion a year. Is it okay to leave the system as is? No, it is not. The Treasury Department's Inspector General for Tax Administration says the IRS should stop giving tax credits to undocumented workers. Over the past five years, he's repeatedly told that to the IRS. But the agency has not taken action. It's very troubling. It is something that is solvable. Why has the IRS done nothing? Well, despite phone calls, emails, even a visit to IRS headquarters to get answers, no one at the IRS would meet with me. The agency instead sent 13 investigates a short statement saying it is following the law. And current tax law does not prevent undocumented workers from getting these big tax credits. The IRS says it can't change the law. That needs to come from Congress. We've got to deal with it. Congressman Burton and other lawmakers are now ready to act. They've already sponsored a bill. It would essentially authorize additional child tax credits only for U.S. citizens with a Social Security number. So far, the bill has gone nowhere. But after seeing our investigation, Burton says Congress must keep trying. I'm a taxpayer, and the thought of me paying for 24 people who are living in one trailer boggles my mind, especially when you tell me that most of them are still living in Mexico. That's, that's unconscionable. Many immigrants disagree. You don't see this as taking advantage of the system? Para mí, no, no. Oh, for me? No. No, it's not taking advantage. I'm very thankful to this country for the help it gives me. This undocumented worker has lived in the United States for 14 years. Inside this home, he's raising three children here in Indiana. But he admits on his tax returns, he also includes four nieces and nephews who live in Mexico. Have the children in Mexico ever lived here with you? No, no because they can't travel. If the children have never lived here, why should they be getting tax credits? My question is, who's going to help them if they're not eligible? To avoid them ending up in the drug mafia, begging in the street, being raped, there's a lot of things that could happen to them if you don't help. Because you know, when you come here, to your family down there, you are their hope. But the inspector general insists additional child tax credits were never intended for illegal immigrants, let alone people who've never lived in the United States. It's being abused by people who are not entitled to use it, and that is problematic. Is this cheating the system? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yes, it's cheating the American taxpayer. Of course it is. We all believe in uh, humanity and humanitarianism, but we can't subsidize and take care of the whole world. Make no mistake, this is a politically charged issue, especially in an election year. And that's why some lawmakers are looking the other way. But I've already spoken to the offices of several representatives and senators who say this issue is too big to push off until next year. They think action will take place if taxpayers demand it. So if you feel strongly about this issue, one way or the other, now is a good time to let your lawmakers know. We've got their contact information posted at WTHR.com. I'm Bob Siegel, Channel 13, Eyewitness News.
Obviously, that was a story done by that television station, and we gave them uh, appropriate credit for it. It's not my research. Uh, Dr. Keyes, your reaction? Well, Stan, I have to be honest. I always have difficulty, uh, how can I put it, getting exercised about the abuses that are inherent in the whole income tax system, uh, especially those which reflect the simple fact that the whole system itself is an abuse. Uh, and, and so let's you and him fight over how this system is being abused by this one, by that one, by the other one. And I'm thinking to myself, well, no person, uh, let, let's see, no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself which the courts translated into that wonderful warning that uh, everybody is supposed to get. You have the right to remain silent um, if you give up that right, etc. Uh, and, and so every person in America then operates as if a system that is based on the impression that you are compelled to provide testimony against yourself in the matter of your income, that that system isn't already defrauding you, not of your money, but of your basic rights. So we're now supposed to fight over whether or not the system is operating in such a way as to defraud taxpayers of this or that little uh, uh, dollar here and there. And meanwhile, the system is overthrowing their fundamental God-endowed rights as recognized in uh, the uh, Bill of Rights, uh, and, and clearly recognized, and, and we're, we're, we don't have people who will do that. That's what I think this whole system is about now. It's about politicians who basically are abusing the liberty of the American people, destroying it for the sake of their own power so that they can continue to have this monopoly control over the income and good faith and credit of the people of the United States, abusing it to destroy us as they have for the last decade. And meanwhile, we're going to fight each other over the abuses that are inherent in a system that is grounded in a premise that defrauds us of our most basic rights. Does this make sense to you? Because it seems to me that that is exactly what they want us to do. Be distracted from the fact that we have overthrown your liberty, are destroying your constitutional rights, are turning you into us enslaved people, whether it's wage slaves uh, to the government through an abusive tax system uh, or enslaved in your conscience by mandates while we shall be the gatekeepers of life and death access to health care. Frankly, I think it's time the people of this country stopped being played this way and started waking up to the fact that all this junk that they are putting in front of us is deeply abusive in order to distract us from the fundamental fact that they are destroying our entire way of life, especially when it comes to respect for the basic constitutional rights we're supposed to have. So I get impatient. The whole system is abusive. I have said for years, we must abolish the income tax. Uh, we must get rid of the 16th Amendment, which should never have been put in the Constitution in the first place. And we must return to the original Constitution of the United States, which funded the federal government with tariffs, duties, excise taxes, so that these people could not abuse the people of the country without destroying the flow of income into their own coffers. That's what the founders thought was the course of wisdom. And I agree with that. And so do I. I'd like to talk about Oprah Winfrey. Now, you may think, why in the world would I want to talk about Oprah? Uh, I'm not a fan of hers, although I uh, give her her due. She was, mm. she was and is a talented person, and she made herself. No one handed it to her. But now she's unmaking herself. Her network has lost a third of a billion dollars. Uh, it's other people's money, Discovery Network. They're going to go broke unless they ax her network. Um, and there's a, there's a question out there, and I have an opinion. I'd like to know yours, Alan. Uh, I believe when Oprah Winfrey burst the bubble of being a, a good person, a, a, a loving person, a caring person, an empathetic person, a, a, an interesting person, and became a Barack Obama black person, she lost her white audience, and the result is, she's nothing. She's absolutely nothing. No one buys her magazine. No one watches her network. No one cares her opinion. It's over. Now, that's my opinion. Uh, and I think that political correctness, which I think is absurd, is going to cause politically correct people like the Discovery Network to go bankrupt themselves rather than admit she 
is, you know, the era of Oprah is over. Your thoughts. <laughs> well, given my opinion of Oprah, you're, you're doing this to me tonight, Stan, because I, I think that every minute that I spend in my life talking about Oprah Winfrey is a minute that I'll have to apologize to God for spending that way. <laughs> Alan, why did you waste your time on this when there were so many important things to be done? But the truth is that, as you have said, we can't get away from the fact that uh, for better and mostly, I think, for worse, uh, she built herself up into someone who had a lot of credibility uh, with a big audience around the country. And she did it, Stan, I think, with, uh, by, by following what I often have said to folks is what I believe a lot of these folks do. They tell you the truth 99.9% .9 of the time. But that 0.1% where they're lying to you, it's the really big whoppers. So she gives the attitude, compassion, solicitude, good information, care about family, about motherhood, and so forth and so on. And then she'll promote homosexuality or she'll promote some book where uh, this old guy is, is exploiting an underage girl and then she kills herself when he goes off and falls in love with someone else and says, that's the most romantic thing I've ever read. And I thought, what a travesty. And of course, she worked to impose upon this country using that base she had, uh, or arguably uh, the worst administration in the history of the United States, and one that is questionable in every respect, in terms of its allegiance to the country, in terms of the policies that it is pursuing to push this country uh, into socialism, in terms of the destruction of our moral conscience, in terms of the wickedness and the promotion of the culture of death around the world. Uh, and there's Oprah Winfrey, and there you have it, Stan, because you know that whopper she told sure. about Barack Obama? It really proved to be a doozy, didn't it? So all those years when she was, everybody was so pleased and watching the show and thinking they were getting something out of it, and there she was storing up the capital, which she could then deploy in the whopper that, if we're not careful, is going to destroy our country. Uh, so in that respect, I guess I have to thank you. You got, gave me an opportunity to get that off my chest. Uh, and in terms of her uh, network going bankrupt, I always thought, don't you think there was something that, that really explained why she supported Obama in the name of that network? OWN, OWN, uh, Ref, and the, the, the uh, Oprah Winfrey Network. And I'm thinking to myself, there you have it. That's pretty good. There's somebody who, while other people are are ostensibly watching her, she's just holding a mirror up watching herself. And that narcissism, she seems to have greatly in common uh, with this man uh, that she foisted off on the people of this country. And don't forget his uh, lovely wife. All right, At the, speaking of the White House, the White House Visitor's Office, you probably saw the story, requires, you ready, that if a woman come to the White House and she be pregnant, that she register the baby inside of her uh, on the White House law. Would you tell me why, uh, uh, where you have a president, a first lady, to believe that even if the baby is born, that you can kill it? Why in the world are they requiring pregnant women to register that the... Uh, the baby inside them as if it were a person. Maybe they, that way they get a, a, a child tax credit of some sort. Well, I, I think you'd have to ask them about that, Stan. I, I think that since they take a position uh, that contradicts our moral conscience, our common sense, uh, our uh, uh, language usage over the course of many centuries, everything confesses that this whole lie they push that this is just tissue, that it's not a child, it's not a human life, it's nothing we have to say. It's all a lie. And, and the fact that they then have to, in the steps that they take, act according to that common sense, long-standing acknowledgement of the life and personhood of the child is simply a, a, a fact that reveals the depth of that lie. Uh, and it reminds me a little bit of what I read in Stephen Meyer's book about uh, the people who pushed the doctrine of evolution. And then the only way they can talk about biology is by speaking of what they find and discover in biology as if it is the result of a, a purposive and intelligent design, right? 
Uh, and similarly here, these folks, in order to sell their lying culture of death, will try to convince uh, poor uh, young women and others and delude them with this notion that what is in their womb is not human, is not uh, a, a, a child, is not to be respected uh, as a babe. And, and yet common sense revolts. I remember having a discussion with a young lady some years back at a, we were having a question and answer at a speech I was giving. Uh, and, we, and she asked me uh, how dare I should uh, prefer uh, this uh, be, uh, th uh, thing that's not even a life over uh, a fully developed life, the, you know, this is a being that's not even human. Uh, and I just looked at her at one point and I said, you know, uh, dogs come from dogs and cats come from cats and I guess human beings come from human beings. So if you're pregnant and what is in the womb there is not a human being, what are you? <laughs> And, of course, she had no answer. And I don't think these people would either. Well, speaking of that very fact, it's almost enough to make you, you know, get whiplash. But we have a, a uh, expose of the fact that in China, where they regularly seize children living and yet to be born uh, and kill them, that they're taking those children and making them uh, into a quote-unquote aphrodisiac and selling them. Uh, and that in Korea, they just intercepted whatever thousands of these aphrodisiac pills that are filled with, in essence, ground-up babies. I mean, it's, it's almost beyond conception, but then again, we don't have a president, and we don't have an administration, and we don't have a Congress, and we don't have a country at this point willing to stand up and say, that's wrong. You know, if they were killing turtles, we'd say it was wrong. Mm -hmm. But killing babies and grinding them up and selling them as an aphrodisiac, well, you, you can say it, I can say it, but I, I can't say it without profanity. Well, Stan, I think, first of all, the whole thought of that, where you are taking the being that is supposed to be respected as the result of the act of procreation and using it to make a product that is then to encourage and make more pleasurable uh, uh, recreational uh, sex uh, without regard for the life of that child. Uh, in a culture where the government has been systematically slaughtering children, uh, so they're now going to uh, not only show contempt for the act itself, they are going to pursue profit from the killing that they have been mandating. And, and then we have an administration that has been using the influence and, and all of the leverage of the people and government of the United States to promote this culture of death, to force it on people who don't want it and have been resisting it. Uh, so of course they're not going to stand up against the Chinese government which is implementing it wholesale. Of course they're not going to stand firm uh, with the Chinese dissident Chen who, who, blind though he is, can see the wickedness and evil of the Chinese government's policy uh, uh, slaughtering uh, innocent human life. But not uh, the Obama administration, not the Obama faction, not the people who are out there promoting this culture of death using the good faith, credit, and resources of the American people throughout the world. And then these same people stand, and this is the irony of it, isn't it? These folks will stand there, and if you were going to say something good about folks who promote socialism, it might at least be that they may be motivated by a desire to bridle the mayhem that can be done by unbridled greed and the pursuit of profit at the expense of human life and human dignity. I bet they'd say this all the time, wouldn't they? And yet what do we have here, Stan, but the clear evidence that the culture of death which they promote is at the end of the day not something that is just about killing those babies. It's about destroying respect for human life so that you open human beings to uh, the unbridled exploitation of those who have no respect for life if it's going to cost them money. 
and will have no respect for life if by killing they can get more money. And whether you're talking about the Chinese government and this kind of atrocity or some of the uh, big pharmaceutical companies in different parts of the world that go into the third world and do their experiments without regard for the death toll uh, uh, in the uh, subjects that they are, are uh, uh, involving and all their ignorance in uh, their uh, research. I mean, attitudes like this are the direct result of devaluing our, our human life and our respect for human life. So sadly, Stan, I guess I'm not surprised, uh, though I am shocked, uh, to see this result in the context of what has been the Chinese government's systematic adoption of a policy of coercion, coercive murder, coercing people, not only into taking that life, but into the fundamental violation of human conscience that is involved in it. Uh, and final point, of course, I hope that uh, here in America, we're not feeling like that's just happening over there, Stan, because the idea that government is now going to coerce people into doing things that violate their conscience, isn't that precisely what the whole battle over Obama's health mandates on things like abortion are, is about? Uh, that we now have a government that in total disregard and in fact taking the principles and premise of this country and standing it on its head, they're going to say that government power exists to force people to do wrong instead of making sure that they'll be safe when they do right. It's just the opposite of what we're supposed to be. And yet, uh, when we look over there in China, that principle of coercive evil doing is taking root right here. We'll be right back with more with Dr. Alan Keyes here on Talk to Solomon. Do you have a cell phone? I do. In fact, everyone I know does. There's only one problem with cell phones. They're too damn high. You remember that guy. Uh, with me is Ted Williams, one of America's experts on cell phones, and a guy who's been responsible, along with his company, for hundreds of thousands of people saving money on cell phones. Ted, thank you for joining us. Talk to us. Well, I tell you, Stan, right now, uh, every dollar a person can save is, uh, is a dollar earned. I'm, I'm telling you, in this economy, the price of gas and, and uh, the unsure situation with employment, uh, our business is tailor-made and our, our cell phone packages are tailor-made to, to help everyone out. All right, let's state a few facts. Unlimited service isn't unlimited service anymore. Right or wrong? It's right for the, a lot of the, the big carriers that you're familiar with, but uh, our company has got truly unlimited talk, text, and web. We don't slow speeds down. We don't charge you after one or two gigabytes. It's truly unlimited running on a nationwide uh, network with roaming options if people want it. And to get unlimited service, which many people use today in their business, you're going to spend $120, $130, $140. How do you compare? We've got plans that start at $20 with rollover minutes. And our truly unlimited talk, text, and web plan is $59 a month. Again, no limits on the data. And the, the uh, exciting thing is you can earn, as a customer, you can earn free service by simply referring a few customers to us. That earns you free service potentially for the rest of your life. Now, I'm going to make sure I'm hearing this correctly. Without paying money, without being in the business, simply... If your customer, at whatever the customer costs are, and I assume there are no deposits or that type of thing, uh, that if you refer a few friends and they get service, you can earn free service for yourself? Absolutely. It's, uh, as you said, no, no contract, no deposit, no credit check, uh, and we have many, many payment options. Uh, they can be auto-billed, uh, auto-debited, phone in and, and make your payment over the phone or, you know, it, a lot of options on how to pay the bill, but truly unlimited talk, text, and web available to you 
for $59 a month, and if you refer a few friends, totally free. Now, two other questions. You said roaming is an option. How much does it cost? Uh, if you have unlimited nationwide roaming, it would be an additional $20 uh, if you So if you're, you need you're it. still but, only $79. Correct. But you may not need it because we are on the nationwide network. Okay. And the second thing is, do you only have dial-up phones that you have to carry in a suitcase, or do you actually have the latest and greatest Droid phones? We have uh, Android phones are the hottest selling uh, items right now on, on our site. But we also cater to those people that all they have a need for is a simple flip phone. So you can go from, you know, from the top of the line phone to a, a free phone. And are you competitive on those prices? Absolutely. The phones, uh, most people don't realize this, but the phone prices you hear on television are tied into contracts. We don't have a contract. So our phone, you buy it, you own it, and you pay the real price. The way you can find out how competitive it is is simply ask any of those big three or four companies, what is the price of the phone if I don't have to sign a contract? And they'll tell you many of those Android phones are $400. There you go. All right, folks, you can get more information by dialing 1-800-299-8362 or just go to cpnlive.com and click on the icon that says get free phone service. Free. Free. I can afford free. Can you? Free is good. Thanks.